well-deserved retirement from Arcane. Um, these. These are Pyrian Towers, and the, the model is, hold, 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 hold. These are the Versus 3 Grand V6T Plus Tower Speaker. I want to make sure I get that right. And if you follow this channel at all, you or you watch me live stream at all, Wednesdays and Sundays on Twitch, um, you'll know that I not only have these 6-inch version, but their Big Daddy Brother 8-inch versions are upstairs. And when I'm done with this review, I'll move these to the side, and we'll get those down here. And before the recording, for the while I've had them now, probably two months, this has been a $3,000 set of speakers, and the other ones have been a $4,000 set of speakers. On sale currently, which is great for you guys, because $2,300 for the set. Now, Aperion has sent me a couple things. Um, little outdoor speakers, which I really liked, but they're outdoor speakers, so like you can only basically do outdoor speaker things with them unless you need speakers with brackets and you can use them as rear channels. The super tweeters that are in my own Walsh collection, like up in my bedroom, if you watch the video on all the things, those thousand dollar super tweeters are like, uh, and now the tower speakers have shown up. So when they contacted me and they're like, hey, you want to get, reach out and get some of these? I'm going to wipe this off of my shirt because it's such a nice finish. We'll talk about the finish on Aperion speakers because um, it's probably the best finish in any speaker. Uh, they're like, hey, you want to, I wanted to do the big ones. Like, you want to do the big ones? Great. Big ones are fantastic. Do the sixes also because these are the ones they send to home theater enthusiasts. And I'm like, well, I'm a home theater enthusiast, obviously. And I stand here before you with this set up in a pure 2.0, that bass note that just happened, I have remotes occasionally, and I know where they are occasionally. Can I skip to the next like big bass thing? Because I want you to just pay attention to that like. What? Like what? That's why home theater enthusiasts are all over these. But I gotta look at them from a musical point of view. So in a bass, $5 uh, cyber power power strip onto these expensive looking $50 cables into these uh, Orchard Audio uh, Star Crimson's being fed signal from the Fio K9 ESS. This is as you look how look how ooh with well, the reviews of those coming too. Those are pulse with modulation amplifiers and they're very low distortion, like make the LA90 la like jealous at high power and these are four ohm speakers which is automatically making some of you go oh no zeos no zeos what is an ohm um not ohm walsh like in my bedroom ohms is the level of resistance and actually lower ohms is less resistance it's weird but it's less resistance and harder to drive because more power has to cycle through the amplifier it's the best way I could describe it. I'm not an electrical engineer. All I know is if you take speaker wires out of the back of the speaker and you just touch them together, that's essentially zero ohms, and then things explode. So the lower you get, these Star Crimson's can do down to two ohms. And, you know, headphones like 300 ohms, and it's like, Doo -doo -doo -doo, but then it gets harder to drive once you get higher. It's weird. Anyway, I'm sitting here. Bass response on these is phenomenal for a six inch. Now they're not a cheap speaker. Like we're not, we're not competing with like a thousand dollar, thousand dollar set. These are 3000 when they're not on sale, 2400 right now when they are on sale. So you kind of expect them to be capable. What makes these and other Aperion towers, like the ones upstairs unique is if I get down on all fours, like a dog, oh God, mirrors. Um, firstly, speaker wires provided by Periapt. Did you know Periapt now makes speaker cables? This is the raw one, and they've got the wrapped one over there. Anyway, you come down here, we get real low, real low. Hi, how you doing? Sexy little thing. That's what makes this unique. They actually have a treble modification on the back of the speaker where you can jump this little jumper uh, to actually three different spots, either zero decibels, negative three decibels, or pull out entirely, which I don't know which one of those it does. But um, don't. Don't bridge that. Don't, does that fit? Oh, that fits. That's not good. Don't jump, the, jump that in there. 
But what this allows you to do is tune the speaker because we don't have like a DSP powered, you know, boot cart where you can load the program and it's all internal. If you want to change how the speaker sounds, usually there's two options. Um, shove foam in front of it, which I've done in several speakers, by amp, which I plan on doing on the bigger version of these, just to test. You can see there's binding toast at the bottom and the top. This is for the entire upper range. This is for the six and a halves. This is for the five and a quarters and tweeter. So you could break it up into two different things and you can amplify it separately. So you can give the bass section more power. There's a separate amp for that. Um, and now this treble mon has to do with the tweeter. So they don't give you three binding posts, they give you this, which then lets you pick different sections of the crossover. And I personally, in this space, put it in the negative three treble mod. It just makes everything a little bit softer. Three decibels is plenty. Three decibels is plenty. Here's your dual ports, by the way. So there, there are dual ports. I don't know if there's separate chambers. It might be separate chambers. It may just be, it needs two ports and they set, separated them this far. Um, while we're down here, I have the legs on this flipped upside down because I had these upstairs on my hardwood floor. And you can see there's a nice aluminum, it's not sharp, but it's a point. And if I turn this whole bracket upside down, that's the way it's supposed to come. I turned it upside down, put the point up, and then put uh, felt pads in the bottom so that it could slide along my floor. I did it to the large ones as well. So yeah, back here, this is the interesting part. The fact that you could actually say, I want less treble today. It's like the old school JBLs where you used to have a, a switch in the front to literally tune them to your liking. More speakers need this. This is nice. This speaker costs, you know, usually $3,000. I love, I think I'm gonna do reviews laying down horizontally on the floor from now on. The speaker costs three grand usually, now it's on sale. Add that little bit extra work to make it so I can jump between different settings on the crossover, on the actual internal crossover. That's fantastic. Because I was able to go from like, huh, you know these speakers? Yeah, no, they're, they're good, they got lots of detail, but I'm a bit close here. This I would consider a bit of a close call. But just go behind and go, okay, now this. The, one, the big ones, those have two different jumper sets, I think. I think it's two jumper sets and then maybe three separations. It's, it's more. These are, this is the reason that, that home theater enthusiast guesses is because they just plug it in. They probably, if you're using these as your left and right, they probably leave those on full treble because you got a little more distance. Like if they were back here where I keep the clips THX, I would release the treble. Release the treble. Um, I can't tell you uh, how hard they are to power because not many speakers claim to be fully four ohm. Even my own Walsh's are six ohm. But this Stark Rimson setup is just gonna destroy anything I throw it at it. Actually, let me get out of the arcane only folder. Huh. Get out of the arcane only folder and back to my entire selection of music, which most of it can probably get me kicked off the internet. So here we go. Everything starts with quiet violins. Everything. Or loud violins. Alt. Let's see. S is shuffle. D is default. Yeah. These are dramatic speakers. That's the only way I could put it. Like, I, I come and I claim that these triangles are probably the most balanced listening experience on a speak on a tower speaker I've had. Front ported, three six and a halves, five and a quarter. It's a beautiful five and a quarter, and it's just, it's perfectly linear. And it's like, I love that in a speaker. But then I look to the right of these, and I have 590s and RF7s. And then you know what I look to? I look to these, and I go, holy fuck, dramatic. Because sometimes music needs a little bit of added. That. Right there, epic score. We get to play this without shutting it off. Let me just, let me just do it. Because what we're looking at here, besides that, which I think that has a lot to do with those Orchard Audio mono blocks. Um, what we're looking at here is a basically an MTM mid-range tweeter mid-range uh, with a rubberized surround to cover the screw holes, which also acts as a slight waveguide, and then a Furo fluid soft dome, 
with a divot in the center and it's got a little protector here even though it won't stop any kid from jamming their thumb in it and you got real face plugs real face plugs it's been so long god i don't the, the, what a face plug does is this this middle bit usually there's like the cone in the middle of a driver and it just goes in and out with it but the whole point of a speaker is to try to channel shape the way it's pushing air to, to quote golden sound it's all about wiggly air this is all we're just paying thousands of dollars to get the air to wiggle the right way so what these do these are solidly attached to the magnet structure and the the actual driver moves around it and it just folds the air around this non-moving bit and it channels it and i can fucking tell by the way ohm walsh's have a wave guy have a uh one of those pointing down into the middle of a box I don't know why but they do so you've got a very very nice soft dome because that's that's a it's a big one too if you're counting the entire surround that's like an inch and a quarter i think it might be labeled as an inch then you have these two five and quarters so not like huge just enough and then you have these six and a half filling in the low end which when we get to the eight inch version exact same top end eight inch drivers which is going to be a point of discussion on whether is that a worthwhile upgrade if you just get this much base out of these anyway but when i get them down here I'll, I'll make the real assessment so you've got quite a lot of stuff going on up here any company that can make that appear in super tweeter i'm just going to sit down and listen to your speakers because you know something about audio so you get this nice controlled um phase plugged wave guided front firing you get this nice soft dome tweeter god i just miss a good soft dome and we all just miss a nice good soft dome every now and then everything's got to be like planars and shit and then so you get this like perfect imaging let me let me let me hold on let me go through some more uh i wish it was singing in epic score but there isn't it just like turns the volume up like whatever you're listening to i've heard this song i say i've heard this song i haven't heard this song a hundred times but let's say you've heard a song a hundred times when you listen to it on like Aperion stuff I haven't tested the big ones except for upstairs, but when you listen to it on period and stuff, at least down here, it just takes everything and turns the excitement level up 15%. Not 50, not 100, it doesn't double it, but just enough that you go like, huh, I wanna listen to this whole thing again now. Oh my God, that's the fucking shit. So there's like the, the prodigy uh, sh funky shit great song it's just wooing along perfectly between the two things i've got the marks on the floor now i could separate things out listening test mono blocks this is this is a great experience and i spent a good deal of time just watching movies on it i don't have a center channel to match these in fact does hold on we're gonna go internet shopping for a second let's go shopping Home audio custom installed. Yep, they have they have a matching entire surround sound setup for these, including bookshelf speakers. So they have an eight hundred dollar center channel, but doesn't have the waveguides. Oh wait, it does. Did I? I gotta get closer to the television. So they've got it with. I think those six. Those are sixes, and then the five and a quarter or a four phase plugged with the tweeter for a cent well there's my new recommendation for a center channel that's it just that because i've if if what you took here you just yank this out and put it there although there i have a klipsch thx 5000 but if you were to do that to match this that's why this is the popular one it's a four inch i called it called it from the picture so the little the little face plugged one is a look at that crossover look at that it's like a slice of lasagna as an italian that's a beautiful crossover you put that little parmesan cheese ah look how because they probably have the switching posts on it already time intensive iterating design of fine-tuning crossover networks results in smooth crossover networks matter so much because i walk over here when i see the boot cart uh s300 mark ones hard as fuck to drive expensive using cheap drivers these original boot carts use cheap drivers but the crossover network is like eight inches long 
and probably took Maz Bukart like 10 months to perfect. It's all about the crossover. When you don't have this, when this is not available, when self-powered digital signal processing is not available, which these are twice the price of these. Well, no, now that these are on sale, these are three times the price of these. Um, when you don't have the ability to just go and DSP correct a thing, that's where it matters. Building the crossover. More important than the box. Oh, by the way, if you didn't notice it, I want to play more funky shit. I love the Prodigy. I love the Prodigy. Oh, let's try to blow them up. All right, I'm going to select that song and then we'll try to blow them up in a second. I, I picked the Blade Runner 2049 track, 2049. If you didn't notice, the shape of the box is as such. And most speakers, the shape of the box, well, honestly, JBL is doing it a little bit here, but like cheaper because it's just a straight line. But square thing, square. What this does, how did I get fingerprints on it again? We'll get to the finish. We'll get to the finish when we get to the the big ones, because those are in cherry and these are in black. And this is like the shiniest black. Trust me on the black, the blackness of these. I could verify the blackness. The shape of this box tapers back in a curve, which means that the sound that fires backwards from the speaker, because the speaker, when it, it does this, obviously it's throwing air out to make sound. It's also throwing air back to make sound. They can't stop that from happening. So all they can do is curve the box so that the sound, instead of just going straight back, comes back and hits the walls and bounces and bounces and bounces and bounces. I mean, like there's b and W speakers, like the crazy $40,000 Nautilus ones. It was like a seashell. They literally have things behind the tweeters so that it goes like this, so that it bounces the sound to an infinitely small amount, like over 12 inches of like cone. So they're not quite that crazy, but same principle applies heavily heavily dampened boxes that have this shape prevent the sound from rattling into the box and then bouncing back out through the drivers because it'll still make sound through it. So a lot of that sort of design stuff goes in the speakers. Not many people know about it. It's like, yeah, speaker, box. This is why I fucking hate car stereos. Everyone's like, Zios, do car stereos. I'm like, what car? Do want door things? Dish? We'll just get a brand that doesn't gonna explode. Car stereo done. I'm gonna do a video at some point where I explain the worst part about being an audio YouTuber. And one of them is that you kind of have to enjoy music like in a, a sense of like, I'm paying attention to this, except in a car. You blast a shitty stereo and I'm super happy because I don't have to assess anything. Don't ruin cars for me. Anyway, the only negative, uh, there's, a, there's a couple negatives. These aren't perfect speakers. I'm not gonna go there and just start all over them. Although the finish would just slide right off. The looks in the front, on these smaller ones, isn't bad. We got good proportions. We got the six and a halves. We got these nice, they're actually relatively soft surrounds. We got this fascia is kind of like, eh? It's got this, like, for the back of it, it's like this beautiful black. And then you've got this like hardened plastic shell that they put around it on the front. They give you grills right here. They, they assemble them out of multiple pieces of plastic honeycomb. They cover them, they got felt on them, they're all magnetized. You slide them on like this. I'm not going to put it on. I'm not going to put this grill on. Here's what it looks like with the grill on. See my middle finger? There's a reason it's the middle finger. Because if you let go of this grill, what happens is it sinks into this channel and there's no way to get it out unless you wedge something to the side of it and pry it off. Because I, I'm actually going to modify these I was going to do it before this video, but I'm like, you know what? I'll show you anyway. I, I, I cut this off a whistle, a hyper whistle, actually. It's just a piece of like seat belt material. And I'm just going to glue it or staple or something to this to give me a little tab, a little pull tab. Because when I first got these, I'm like, oh, cool. And I put the grills on them. Oh, cool. How do I get the grills off? Because it's literally, it seats perfectly flush, which makes them very WAF approved or half approved how many wives are actually watching this right now that are going to buy these without their husband's permission i guess gotta know raise your hand unless you're don't want your husband to know because he probably watches me too and you're like oh shit fucking reggie um would you wear these with with this like could you do that like i could see it like okay we're just gonna just cover the beautiful thing so my biggest problem was you have to wedge it out and i actually damaged this one 
Uh, I forget what I was using. Nothing like crazy. Uh, maybe my unboxing knife, like just like the thin, just just to get it in there, so just give it a little bit. And I, this is wood. This is MDF under this plastic. And I went, and I went, oh no. So I put a nick, and I had to color it over with a magic marker right there, because I had because the only way to get this grill off is with a tool. And I didn't have. I'm stupid, and I didn't go on search for my little plastic tool that you take apart phones with. So that's a fucking negative. That's a negative. It's like, give, just give me, usually there'll be like a little pull tab at the bottom and you just go and you yank it or you have a way to get around the side with your fingertips and you could just physically pull things off. These make it like a goddamn Chinese finger trap. It's like, ha ha, now what? Try me. Like they could even get really creative and put a button on the back that pushes the grill off. That would be insane and way too much work and effort, but I'm waiting to see it happen on a speaker. So they look fantastic. They're the right height also. I'm a big fan of sound priority, like like um, height dominance is what I called it. That's why these clip speakers are way the fuck up here and why I like speakers that are like, okay, where's my center line? N just under nipples. These are too low. I, I mean, I've got these $7,000 speakers. You'd think I wouldn't need to do anything to these boot carts, but they're up on eight inch cinder blocks because they're too low. These, when you sit down on a couch, and I'm assuming this couch is pretty average, the tweeters are perfect. That's the perfect height. They could have made them shorter. You could see there's so much room. They could have just like, just crouched it. They didn't do it. And the big ones are even bigger. They're RF7 size. So you're gonna get that height dominance. You're gonna get it at least ear level, eye level, ear level to the tweeter or higher. And you know what? You can tell. Oh, let's blow the speakers up now. That's all I could play. That was eight seconds. You think I'm gonna get a copyright strike on that? I didn't hear anything fart. Nothing. I mean, I didn't touch the volume. We're not quite maxed out on the K9, but that took that like a champion. These speakers are really, really well designed. Most speakers, you play the beginning because it's just literally high. It's just literally waveform immediately. To the point where it's like, why did this song get written like this, Hans? Hey, Hans, Hans Zimmer. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm sure people have distorted. Every time this song plays, I'd say at least 35% of the time, someone's distorted their speakers because they just turn it on and they don't think to check for, for, the, for, the, for the death warble. I'm hearing things around the room move. I don't even hear bass. That's such a deep note. I'm not even hearing it next to the thing. I'm hearing my computer over here going like, ah, I don't want to be here. And something behind that speaker is like wobbling. Like what the hell? How do you do that with a six and a half? So let's just recant some really simple basic things about speakers. Imaging, fucking great. If you're using these for music, they image like a mofo. If you're using them for home theater, put them far apart, get a center channel, get the matching center channel. I'm not usually a fiend about matching things but I want this there, so get the matching center. I don't know if I'd spend $800 on rear channels. I'm using like Swan DIYs for my rear channels and it was like 300 bucks. It's like, eh, rear channels don't matter as much, but if you're one of those people who's gotta match the finish, you might as well get them all. I'm not gonna deny that. Or you can get different colors for each one of them. They don't make these in white. So the looks, I'll complain more about the looks on the eight inch. The looks on this are fine. They could have gotten a little bit more fancy here, maybe, or they could have put some more contrasting stuff or pin foot. I don't care. It's fine. If you leave the covers on it, it's even finer. Actually, are these the covers for the eights? Oh, here. If you want to do a real quick comparison before I move these out of the way. Here's the cover for the eight inch speaker. It is, it is, it, it's as wide as this speaker. The eight inch are huge and this is actually made out of wood. So just going to put that, put that back down there until I get the speakers down from upstairs. The eight inch are dumb and also have the same dumb problem where the thing sits in and you have to use the thing to pry it out, it's dumb. That's mm, it's one problem. I fixed the base by rotating them around so I didn't have spikes on my wooden floor because they give you, they give you things to seat that in. I should have, there's an, are those here? Damn it. They actually are, wait, 
Here we go. I got them. I knew I had bags of fun toys. They give you port plugs in case you want to plug the base. In case you want to remove the base, which you'd have to have a pretty terrible environment to say, hey, you know what I really need? Less, less base. And they give you eight of these little discs, which are designed to go underneath. They're silicone bottomed, beautifully machined, and they're designed to go under those little spikes. But since when I mounted those legs, I mounted them upside down, now the spikes are up and it's just flat metal and I put a felt pad. And you could put in a self-adhesive slidey thing and just slide them around. So you do get these to use them. For me as a reviewer, these are never gonna sit in one spot for very long. I'm constantly doing things and I don't wanna have to pick this up, move it an inch and then try to recenter the seat. It's not my bag, baby, not my bag. So overall, I would say, if you're not gonna spend on RF7s and you can't get 590s, and these are a little bit too gentle, these are just like a little, these triangles are a little too, a little too nice. They're a little too nice. You want something that's gonna, you could either have dinner with a really nice young man who sits there in his presentation, oh, I'm the best power speaker, or one that takes 2049 and literally plays it. That's why these are the speakers that the people who are into home theater get. They're into this. And I have to do the sound demo for these now, so. Vocals, like, this is good enough to be its own speaker. And then they throw those on there and then they give it to you in a beautiful box. I have nothing negative to say about the sound. I put it on the three decibel thing. I think that's just a room thing. Just, just calm me down a little bit, calm me down. Ooh. Like the imaging just standing is like right there. That sounds like shit, by the way. That's kick out something from Renegade. Kick out the jams. I would love to be able to play more music on these sound demos. On these, well, the sound demos are on the second channel, by the way. Check out the second channel. But my god, they sound so good. Richard Cheese, Angry Chair, Allison Chains. Yeah, these are right up there with, with any decent tower speaker. This is better than decent. Like 580s are this, this. 590s are this, probably this, because 590s require a lot of special care. And if you could have RF7s or the bigger versions of these, which actually are almost directly comparative in price to those, oh fuck, am I gonna have to do a shootout? I'll think about the shootout. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this up so I can get the big brothers down here. We could talk about their finish, which is cherry, by the way. Mm, shiny ass cherry. Um, links to these in the description. I'll link to the amps and stuff because that review's coming up. Link to the entire thing that's happening here. That wallpaper's in the hoard, which I'm sure you're all gonna go get now. Um, what else am I linking to? I guess I'll link to the center channel version of these. Zeos. Future Zeo center channel version of these in case people want to modify it. And just the only thing I want to appear in to add is a little pull tab. Just a pull tab to get those grills off. Because I, I was so pissed when I was like, I can't get this off. There's literally no way to get my fingers in here. I got to wedge a thing. And I wedged the nearest thing possible and I was like, oh, fuck. So, other than that, I think we're done with these. Check out the sound demo where you'll actually get to hear them. I'll set up the good microphones. Like, here. And let them rip. Now I gotta go move those giant ones down and hurt my spine. So Patreon subscribe star, help me pay for my spine surgery. Also let you see reviews early, participate in yard sales from the first to the 10th of every month, and Lear here lost the sound demos. Uh, for $10 a month, you get in the private behind the scenes Telegram chat, which gives you access to me, to, to message me and at the channel, and you get access to a lifetime swap me channel so you can buy, sell, and trade gear all over the world and you know meet new friends there's so many people have made little separate groups after that it's crazy um i'm done you're done they're done she's done see you in two days or on the sound demo channel